One thing for sure, just looking at it, it's not flipped. It's not what? Flipped. The bird is not flipped. So, all right. Um, I passed out to you, I didn't get it from everybody, these things. Tear off the bottom and let me have your address so I can mail to you the uh, CD. Okay, just rip off the bottom ha- par- portion of it. You want the zip code? You didn't ask for it. No, I don't need. I don't care. Um, you know, I just you, you tear along the dotted line. Okay. On it. So if you haven't done it already, otherwise you won't get the CD because I won't know what you're where to send it. Did you want to? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Oh, oh, and then I tore it off for you. Yeah. All right. So there's that. Um, okay. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Great. Okay. Thank you. Okay, sovereignty. <clears throat> That's what we're on. Let's see where we go with this now. Let's go to... <clears throat> Let's see... Um, language... <clears throat> right, so, so far, I... have brought out that it's important what language, which version of English you're speaking. And we try to stay as much with legal language and specifically the Constitution. So there, there are many terms that they try to get you to use, but when you use those other terms, there's traps. And the, the trap is, is that you might be saying something you didn't mean. So I look at the Constitution. What does the Constitution say? Well, it has the preamble. And it only talks about people, not citizens, in the preamble. So, I use the word people. I don't know the word citizen. Okay? The only other place where uh, I see a commitment on the word citizen is in the 14th Amendment. And the 14th Amendment basically says that if you are born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction then and only then do you qualify as a citizen of the United States. Well, I don't mind being subject to the jurisdiction if I'm actually got a contract going, a quid pro quo, I get something for something. But there's no general citizenship for me. It's a pick and choose type citizenship, which, which I am entitled to. That normally I retain the peopleship. Okay? So I'm one of the people of, of the jurisdiction and I'm only a citizen for certain specific purposes that are of my choosing. And there, there are examples. You know, we, I look at myself as the owner, one of the owners of the system. And so, I've hired some of these people to do things for me, to research things so, for me, and they come up with solutions to problems. And as a general rule, I'll respect those solutions. So I do respect the vehicle code to quite a bit of degree because it, it basically makes sense. It's essentially mostly around safety. Um, some issues like where they get into commercial, um, I'm not familiar with because I haven't gotten to those areas. I don't know, maybe my opinion will change once I get into those areas. But as things stand right now, I have no problem with driving on the right side of the road, stopping for red lights, stopping for stop signs, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, but if a, if a policeman comes along and, and wants to generate issues, create issues out of nothing, well, that I object to. And that's beyond what I've authorized him to do. And so that's kind of the basic perspective I have. This, um, uh, but you, you have to have a clear picture whenever you're involved in anything, a clear picture of are you one of the people or are you one of the citizens? Or are you one of the persons which is synonymous with being a citizen? If you're a citizen, you're basically a ward of the state. If you're a people, then the state is your ward. Okay? The, the, uh, 
Uh, but you have to have that clear distinction. This, um, <coughs> so that's an important point. Are you one of the people or one of the citizens? Let's go down to... Um, here, let's see. We went through this, the preamble of what the various elements of the preamble are. And I mentioned to you that there's the fork in the road. So, let's see. I think we pretty well covered that. Here's the 14th Amendment just to confirm what I just said, which is that um, uh, all persons born or naturalized in the United States and, and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States. Can I enlarge that for you? No. Bill? Yes. Uh huh. Um, you like it on tape? Uh, is it important? You can put it on tape. Oh. It's important. People might want to hear it later. Uh, you might, you might it. I am a people of the country of Canada. Okay. And um, and I domicile here in California. Um, so if I was in court um, stating my case. Would I just say I'm one of the people, or would I have to say I'm one of the people of the country of Canada? Or? Well, one of the things I advocate, because I feel that it strengthens your position both morally and psychologically, and that is to always tell the truth, okay? Mm -hmm. um, we're not looking for ways around the system. We're looking for ways to make the system work as intended by the founders. Um, where I know that uh, there's a standing invitation that Calif uh, Canada, any time it wishes, can become a part of the United States. That's just a standing invitation that was included. I, I don't know if it's legislated or what, but we had very good feelings toward Canada. Uh, King George learned his lesson, and apparently he treated the Canadians better than he treated us, and so they decided to stay with the king. But... Um, um, after saying that, I also have to say, once again, my great leader, Abraham Lincoln, said, if you don't want to argue a point, don't bring it up. So, if you wish to brag that you're a Canadian citizen, well, then uh, I don't know what, what rules kick in on that basis. But I do know that the courts do not consider anything that's not brought up. Okay? Whether it's brought up publicly or secretly, it's not considered unless it's brought up. So, if you are here, you're functioning in our society fully, uh, you have permission to be here, um, uh, you may not qualify for citizenship because you haven't been naturalized, but it doesn't say in the, con in the Constitution that you have to be a people first before you can be a citizen. It just simply defines a citizen of the United States as somebody who is born or naturalized and subject to the jurisdiction. So my guess is, is that if you simply went into court and said you're one of the people of California, I don't know that there's any legal requirement per se because, see, people of California existed long before the immigration laws were passed. It was a concept that you know, if you're one of the people, you're influencing the system. Uh, at, at worst, I would consider you a visiting sovereign. You know, and if somebody offends you as a visiting sovereign, uh, I assume that you invoke your court and you move accordingly. And you follow, because you're a visiting sovereign, invoking the common law, which, by the way, is the common law of England, um, my, which is recognized the Constitution of the United States recognizes the common law of England which is equally foreign to us right so it's the same law that they recognize my guess is, is that you could just move forward I don't know if uh, is, um, is Canada a republic yeah it is mm -hmm. is it constitutionally defined as a republic I don't know. Well, see, that the, the, a republic, the sovereignty is in the people. And um, 
and the people can choose to, to act directly or delegate it to representatives. Is that how Canada works? I believe so. Well, that's not strong enough. You know, you well, need more than belief. It. I have to know. You have to have knowledge. Mm -hmm. But like I said, at worst, I, I'd consider you a visiting sovereign. Okay. And, uh, you know, so you, anybody who offends you, um, causes you an injury, then you're entitled to uh, redress. And under the common law, it's a maximum of the common law that there will always be a remedy for every wrong. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, that's the beautiful part about uh, common law. There shall be a remedy for every wrong. There's no such thing as not having a remedy like there is in the statutory system. Statutory system, you have an injury, everybody knows his injury, but say, well, there was no law against it. When you're at law or in law, you, you decree the law, you prosecute. Yes, sir. Yes, Bill, uh, you refer to, uh, in quote, Abraham Lincoln quite often, and you know, mm -hmm. the last five or ten years, there have been several books come out and saying he was such a traitor to our country. But uh, personally, I, I feel mm -hmm. that if they'd ever divided America like they tried to, it would have been very easy to conquer one segment of the country and then the next, seg the first the north and the south, if they'd ever divided us. And I was well, curious the concept how you feel you. about uh, uh, Abraham Lincoln as an attorney, as a, as a people rather than as a citizen. Yeah. Well, I keep referring to Abraham Lincoln but I'm, you know, I'm referring to him in the, concept, in the context of if you don't want to argue a point, don't bring it up. That's the point I'm trying to get across and he said it. And he's right. As far as I'm concerned. You know, I don't, I don't, when I go into court, I create my papers, I don't say to people, I'm sovereign. I don't say that, um, you know, like that. I say it indirectly. I say I'm one of the people. Nobody argues that. Okay? I don't say I'm a king because I figure I'll get an argument, even though it's true. Okay? Legally speaking, every one of us, every one of you is a king or a queen. So, the, the, uh, but I, instead of saying that, I use the word that's used in the Constitution. I'm one of the people. And I choose to go down the pathway of sovereignty. And so I cite the cases that say, that acknowledge the sovereignty of the people, you know? So I get, a, I get one step removed from the word sovereignty, but that's what prevents argument, all right? And, I, and like I said, I've never have had anybody challenge me in my papers on that point that I'm one of the people. I say I'm one of the people, I accept it. Well, we move forward. That's an important aspect. You know, a lot of this legal work in courts is very analogous to two little kids in the backyard screaming at each other. One of them says, yes, you did. And the other one says, no, I didn't. And it goes back and forth. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Who wins that argument? The last one who speaks wins it. Right? Well, that's how the courts are. We had, a, we had a, uh, a hearing the other day uh, in this case and the, uh, the jurisdiction was being challenged. And the judge sat there and we're suing judges, okay? And he said, he said well, the, ju the judges have absolute immunity, judicial immunity. And, uh, and also the, uh, the claimant failed to put in a claim against, you know, through the claiming channels, but instead went directly to a lawsuit. Well, the lawsuit claims that the government is innocent and that the, uh, uh, it's the people in it that were acting entrepreneurially. They were on their own. And so, uh, um, anyway, but the judge just covered those two points, that they had immunity and no claim was filed with the, the claims department of the government. So, and then the judge uh, ordered the, the defending attorney, defending the judges, uh, to then put together the order and he would sign it. Okay? Well, before that happened, we filed in the order of the sovereign. Okay? We ruled against the judges. 
And we said, no, you're not out of the suit. You're not dismissed from the suit. You're still part of it. And we haven't heard their response to that one yet. But you see, we screamed first. <laughs> okay? On paper. Yes. An attorney? Yeah. Oh, Lockyer. Private attorney? No. Public attorney. Public attorney. Yeah. The, the attorney general. Are you objecting? Uh, we, we put it in our, our uh, answer to their demur that we thought it was rather strange that a, a public, I think we said public funds were being expended for, you know, a private defense. Mm-hmm. We did mention it. We didn't make an issue of it. We just mentioned it as an aside. In fact, we, we said that as an aside, and then we just kind of mentioned it, okay? But, yeah, oh yeah, it's part of the paperwork. So, it should be interesting. It, with time, yes? Something that always confused me is, is how can... Microphone. Yes. Yeah. I'd like to talk one more, but it's not, it's not pretty easy for the people to talk later. One of the things... Uh, questions I always had was, uh, mm-hmm. like in IRS cases, how come the uh, U.S. attorney is is prosecuting a case against we the people uh, for uh, the IRS uh, who isn't even, you know, a government agency? Well, the, 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 um, it's a commonly done thing in all uh, man- high management levels. It, it, it's a very common thing that uh, executives will be on loan to other companies or other operations while staying, mm-hmm. while staying on salary in their own. That, that frequently happens. That's a pretty strong custom that you're not going to buck. But, uh, but that, shouldn't they be really defending but, the, the people that are accused? I mean, but what they've done is the attorney general, he carries his title with him, and he, but he is a private attorney for a private outfit called the Internal Revenue Service. And people don't understand that, of course, and don't raise those issues. But uh, yeah, you could challenge that. Okay. But it, it's kind of it, it's kind of like a side issue to the main thing. You know, the real mm-hmm. question is is what jurisdiction do they have in the first place? Okay. Now, there's a lot of um, little aside here. We get lots of little asides here, I guess. But if you look here, you'll see, where is it? <clears throat> Find it here. Here it is. Internal Revenue Code. If you look at Title 26, Section 7806, 7806 says, right here, that Title 26 is not law. Okay? And if you want the actual wording, let's take it up. Can everybody read that from the back? You want a little larger. How's that? I don't know how large I can go. Now can you read it? Sort of. All right. It says, No inference, implication, or presumption of legislative construction shall be drawn or made by reason of the location or grouping of any particular section or provision or portion of this title. What's a, what do you call presumption of legislative construction? What's the three-letter word that describes that? Law. Law. You can't make any assumption that the Congress meant anything by this just because they passed it. Okay? When I got my um, uh, passport, I applied for a passport. And I filled out all the forms. And then on the back of it, they have this dire warning. If you, if you misrepresent, if you fail, whatever it is, you could be prosecuted for failure. They want things like your name, address, and social security number. 
Well, in the little box it says Social Security number, I wrote in exempt per 26 U.S.C. 7806. Yeah, per. Yeah, per. 26 U.S.C. 7806. Title 26 is the Internal Revenue Code. Okay? If it's not law, then you're not obligated. Right? So, you ask the IRS, what's their authority? They say, well, it's the Internal Revenue Code. Okay, I accept that. That's your authority. So you do whatever you do, just as long as it's not against me, because I'm not obligated. Because 7806 says it doesn't apply to me. It doesn't say it directly, but it says it's not law. You can't presume it meant anything. The legislature didn't mean anything by it. You, right? You can't make an inference or an implication. Does everybody here know the difference between inferring and implying? Okay. If I say something to you and I put the meaning on it, I'm implying. If I say something to you and you put the meaning on it, that's inferring. Okay? So it's all which side of the conversation are you on? So you infer what you hear, the other person implies what he says. So it says here, you cannot infer or imply. No inference, no implication, and no presumptions of legislative construction. That's all I've ever done. I don't know, you know, I hear about 861. Anybody heard of 861? Yeah. I've heard of all these other things, and I say, you know, this is awfully complicated. I can't understand it. I really haven't gotten it. I've read some of this stuff, but you know, it's such a, a logical structure I have to hold in my brain. I can't deal with it. It's really difficult. So I don't. I just go back to 786. So whatever it says doesn't apply here. Okay? Cut them off at the gate. You'll find that this stuff, if you, if you go right on target and you look at the very roots of these things, so that's why I go. I say, I'm a people. That means I'm sovereign. What does sovereignty mean? It means there's no higher law. I am the lawmaker in my kingdom. My kingdom is more commonly called my house. Okay? But I'm the lawmaker. And no one else has a law above me. Now, there, there's actually a biblical foundation for this. Okay? Now, the American system of law is very much based on the Judeo-Christian rules, philosophies, concepts, okay? Never mind the religion aspect, just simply, this is where we get the Ten Commandments and how we've structured our laws, the foundation. We did not structure our system based upon Buddhism, okay, or the Koran or anything else. No, we have our own system. It's an equally valid system, I think. And if you look in Genesis, uh, the story of Genesis, we have, it says that, uh, the, uh, I think the, uh, um, what do you call it, the, not the snake, but the serpent. The serpent inquired as to why it was that uh, she couldn't eat of the fruit of the, tr of the tree, uh, of knowledge. And, huh? Right. And so, a uh, tree of knowledge of good and evil. And so, uh, Eve corrected him and said, no, it wasn't that they, they couldn't eat it. No, she said they were prohibited because they would die. I think something like that. And it, and it was the serpent that corrected her. The serpent told the truth. Yeah, the serpent said to her, it isn't that you will die, it's that if you are to eat it, God knows that you will then know good and evil. No, no. <laughs> Pull out your Bible. I've studied this one. That's he didn't say become like God, he said as you, gods. Amber. Right. Or, yeah. Well, that's yeah. But he told him that, that you would be just like just, uh, 
He said you will become as gods and that you will know good and evil. Okay, we're on agreement now. Okay, that's the final statement. All right. Then, then, later on in Genesis, God discovers that they've eaten of the tree of knowledge. And he says, Behold, these are God's words, and this is almost a good quote. Behold, the man is become as one of us, in that he knows good and evil. Now, what is become as one of us? That means you're equal, okay? You're not equal 100%. You're only equal in this little narrow area of knowing good and evil. Now, why is this important? Well, what makes it important is this, is that if I come up to you and I say, you know, you're wearing pink shoes, and that is wrong and evil, Okay? And then you say, what's it to you? <laughs> you know, you're not better than me. That's probably a reaction, which I, by the way, I don't approve. But that's probably what you would say. And so then, I come back at you and I say, well, it's not me. I'm just delivering the message. God told me to tell you that it's not good, okay? That, that it's evil. Well, if, in fact, you are as God in knowing good and evil, you could come back and say, the fact that it comes from God tells me that it's very good advice. But I respectfully disagree. I like pink shoes. Okay? That would be your comeback. So, you see, there was really no basis for the Inquisition. Okay? During the Middle Ages. But they carefully ignored that aspect. But God... Uh, you have become his equal in that narrow area of knowing good and evil. And this carried over into our legal system. And so, if, if, if you know the difference between good and evil, then you, and because you have your sovereignty, nobody can tell you what's good and what's evil. You have your own opinion. Nobody is entitled to take command of your life if you don't want them to. Now, there's an exception to that rule. And back in the times of Greece, they had juries. And, and they had juries, each jury consisted of a thousand people. Now, the reason it consisted of a thousand, the theory was that no one was rich enough to bribe all of them. Okay? Their safety was in the numbers. Of course, Socrates got a death penalty as a result of that system. But the jury consisted of a thousand. Here in the United States, we've settled on a jury of twelve. That's our system. And so we've said that if, if you have twelve people on the jury, in, statistically speaking, each juror represents one twelfth of the population. If you can get eleven twelfths of the population against you, but one's on your side, then we have to respect that. One twelfth of the population is a big enough group, so we have to respect the opinions. But if a hundred percent is against you, then you must be wrong. That's how our system operates. And I pretty well accept that. I've, I've, I've served juries, I, I've served on a jury three times, and I know the difficulties in coming to an agreement, how it goes back and forth. Eventually you can, but there's a lot of discussion because people are very responsible in how they try to carry out that job. Not necessarily the smartest people or the dumbest. You know, I mean, there's a range of intelligence, but one thing's for sure, every member of a jury that I've ever dealt with has shown me real integrity of purpose on that particular case that we were working on. So I have a high confidence level in the jury system. And I'll, I'll put up with the random, um, the random error of a jury long before I'd be willing to put up with the designed error of precedent that judges exercise. Okay? So, um, anyhow, the, we, that's where we put the dividing line. So, we are all equal. Nobody can come along and say, oh, you have to do what it is, whatever, because I'm bringing you a message from God. Okay? That... that uh, that's been taken out of our hands. None of us is authorized to represent God with that kind of uh, uh, impact or authority. So, that's, so now that's just another 
reason why we are all sovereigns. Okay?